Joining me now, Transport Minister Omar Al Gabra. Minister, the protests continue. You could probably hear the horns behind me right now. Uh, they say they're not going to go anywhere until demands are met. First question, as Aaron O'Toole asked the, your government, is your government willing to meet at all with any of the protesters, any of the protest leaders, and is your government willing to reinstate the exemption at the border or work with the Americans to do that for those particular truckers who are not vaccinated? Evan, it's good to be back uh, with you on your show. Uh, look, let me be uh, uh, very clear. Our government is committed to the health and safety of Canadians and to our economy, and that's why we follow public health advice with all of our measures. Uh, in your question, we, um, I and my team and our government are regularly meeting with stakeholders, including uh, uh, representatives of the Trucking Association, including today. I and my colleagues convened a national uh, supply chain summit that included various representatives from the trucking industry. So we are obviously uh, committed to hearing to all voices. What did they say? I'm intrigued by that. Because, because Mr. O'Toole wants you to meet with the protester leaders, but you're not meeting with, they were not included in that. What did the people that you did speak to say? What did those truckers say? It's important to note for your viewers that uh, all trucking, credible trucking associations have distanced themselves from this protest. Uh, so we're dealing with, uh, you know, re credible representatives of the industry. They tell us that truckers are, 90% uh, of them are fully vaccinated, uh, that there are challenges in the supply chain, including shortage of truck drivers, including uh, uh, borders issues that they need to be dealt with because of, you know, paperwork, the typical uh, is issues that people face day to day. And we are committed to listening to them and working with them on addressing them. Did they, did they tell you that the vaccine mandate, that now the, the exemption's gone, uh, do they have any um, information? Has that affected supply chains? Has that caused disruption, the, 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 the new vaccine mandate at the border? No, I can assure you that they, uh, that they told us they understand uh, the, the reason behind these vaccine mandate. Uh, they also uh, told us that truckers are doing their job. And I can tell you and I assure your viewers, I'm monitoring the volume every day at the border. Truck trucking volumes has not significant, has not been measurably impacted at all. We have not seen any signs of changes to the volume of uh, trucking traffic at our borders. In fact, last week we had over a hundred, almost a hundred thousand truck driver cross the border, which is equivalent to any average week in that period of time per year. So I can assure you that truckers are doing their job. They're going to work. So, so, why, is the, so why do the Canadian Truckers Alliance say they're short of drivers? Where does that come up? Oh, the shortage is, uh, has been around for a while. In fact, you talk to other sectors, there, there is a, a real labor shortage issue that's been compounded by COVID. So, so there are a labor shortage issue. And the Minister of uh, Employment was with us at the summit, Minister Qualtro. And there are programs that were rolling out to work with stakeholders, including truckers, about finding ways how to attract new truck drivers. But to prove the point that there's a shortage of truck drivers, not because of the border measures, there's a shortage of truck drivers who are also driving across the country, interprovincial uh, 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 trucking. So there is a shortage. It's real. And we are want to work with stakeholders to address that shortage. Yeah, the opposition leaders, uh, Mr. O'Toole, and then you've got people like Pierre probably ever say, you're, un you're, you're, un you're not supporting the truckers, you're not supporting Canadians who are calling for freedom from restrictions, um, and that you're demonizing them, that the rhetoric from, from the prime minister calling these people um, a fringe group with, quote, unacceptable views, has polarized this debate, and that they're not, quote, supporting uh, truckers who are helping the economy. What, what is your response to the criticism from the Conservatives that it's the Liberals who have polarized this debate. Yeah. Let me be very clear. We support, our government supports uh, truckers and we have been working with them and will continue to work with them. They have stepped up. We thank them every day for their work and we will continue to do everything we can to support them. Uh, uh, second, uh, you know, we, will, will, we are willing to listen and talk with anybody who has ideas, who has uh, ways to uh, address issues because I know millions of Canadians are frustrated. So there are frustrations not only you know uh, uh, among protesters but across the country about 
COVID. And we understand that. That's why we're committed to doing everything we can to end COVID. That's why vaccination is our best way out of this. And most Canadians agree with us, as frustrated as Canadians are, but they also know that they want their government to do everything they can to maintain resolve against our fight against COVID. There, a lot of Conservatives were on the Hill uh, meeting with the truckers, uh, the protesters, rather. Um, will, will you meet with any of the leaders of this particular protest? And will any Liberals meet with any of the leaders of this particular protest or, or, or go out on the Hill and talk to any of them? I got to tell you, Evan, I am surprised that the Conservatives are uh, still doubling down on their support uh, for this protest. This protest that has one of its manifesto is the overthrow of a democratically elected government. This, some of these uh, protest organizers have had a history of saying hateful things and and really repugnant things. I'm really surprised, and we've seen some troubling signs come out of that protest. I'm not saying everybody who was at that protest... Uh, they dismiss those as bad apples, and they say those are just the bad apples that you're cherry-picking, well, to mix my metaphors here, that you're... That, but can, can, can the concern, in your view, and I'll ask the conservatives in a minute, can they separate their support for this protest from their support for the organizers of the protest? Evan, the manifesto of the organizers of this protest calls for the overthrow of an elected government. Uh, I would, I'm interested in hearing what the conservatives' explanation to this. We can support and offer sympathy to those who are frustrated and listen to them and work with them. But we also need to be clear and unequivocal that we do not accept irrational, extreme points of view that are not going to help our society move forward. Our society. Our society is not divided. 90% of adult Canadians are fully vaccinated. 90% of Canadians or the majority of Canadians want to follow public health advice because they understand that is our best way out of this pandemic. Last question real quick. The, the truckers, I was on the Hill today. Some of the truckers say, we're going to be here. We have, we've raised eight and a half million bucks. We're not leaving. How long is this protest going to last? What's going to happen with it? Look, my hope is that the protesters know that they've made their point uh, and that they, you know, everybody heard about their grievances. Uh, they've now locked down city of Ottawa, locked down businesses in Ottawa are causing a lot of unnecessary uh, disruptions. I call on all of them to go home, find, you know, to lobby their members of parliament, to engage other politicians, but they've made their point. I hope that they... Uh, find a way to go home. Uh, all right, Mr. Algaba, I really appreciate you joining us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Evan.